26 on Facebook for the latest up-to-date coverage near you. Help us fight for life and train the CSRA. Contact the American Heart Association for details. Follow News 1226 on Twitter to keep informed with the latest happening near you. On your side, this is News 12 First at 5. A massive million-dollar grant given to AVU and the Georgia Cyber Center. How this will help grow cyber even more here at home. Plus, a handmade quilt found miles from its home after a tornado ripped through parts of North Carolina. Here's how it made it back to its original spot. But first, cloudy skies, cool temperatures, and rain. That's just been the theme the last several days. But good news is on the way because we're not going to be seeing that this weekend. Right, Riley? That's right, Zeta. Fantastic weather expected for the weekend. And if you have any plans to step out this evening, it's not going to be too bad. But these clouds are still with us, just not producing any rain for us. As we progress into tonight, that cloud cover will continue east. And we are expecting abundant sunshine throughout the day on Saturday. It's going to be thanks to this area of high pressure just building over the region. And that's going to create sunshine for us and some fairly calm winds as well. Not too breezy by any means this weekend. Our current temperatures are in the mid-50s here around Augusta. Same thing in Aiken. A little bit cooler though up towards the lake there at 49 in Thompson in McDuffie County sitting at 46 degrees this afternoon. Now a current look at the Savannah River. Take a look at that watercolor folks. We have seen a lot of rain the past few days and it is completely blown out so not ideal to be on the river this weekend. Let that water settle and that river is high. We're at 54 here in Augusta. Those northwest winds picking up a little bit as a low-level trough swings on through here. And behind that trough, we are expecting those clearing skies tonight. Going to be chilly out there tomorrow, Saturday morning. I'll leave that weekend forecast for you in just a little bit. Thanks, Riley. Augusta University is one of only six colleges nationwide selected for a $3.2 million five-year government grant. Our Sydney Heiberger tells us what this means for AU and the city moving forward. It's the first time Augusta University has ever been awarded this scholarship, and they say it's not only going to benefit students, but the entire Augusta area. The $3.2 million will all go towards paying cyber students tuition for up to three years. And however long the scholarship supports a student is how many years that student must work in a government cybersecurity job after graduation. It's enough money to pay for 55 student years of cybersecurity education. And with the industry rapidly growing right here in Augusta, Dr. Michael Nowakowski says it's good incentive to keep those students contributing to our local economy after graduation. This is a great opportunity for Augusta University and the surrounding community. There are many opportunities available to them through Department of Defense, so they could graduate from this program and go work out at Fort Gordon, for instance. And faculty tells me they're using this scholarship to not only attract students from Augusta, but from outside of it. We'll tell you where they're focusing their efforts tonight on News 12 at 6 o'clock. Reporting in Augusta, Sydney Heiberger on your side. U.S. Senator John Ossoff visiting Fort Gordon today. He and his team visited the Cyber Center of Excellence and the Barracks on Post. He says he wanted to come to the area to better serve those who serve us. There are some very important national security missions uh, that the extraordinary people who work at this post uh, are working on every day. And to have conversations, especially with enlisted personnel, to understand how I can be of service to those who are serving and their families. Senator Ossoff also talked about the COVID-19 relief bill that's on the table. He says he hopes Congress can get it passed here soon. New details on a suspect charged in the shooting death of an Augusta code enforcement officer. Smitty Melton pleaded not guilty in the murder of Officer Charles Case. Melton killed Case back in August when the code enforcement team was serving Melton a notice at his home. Case was shot, but authorities say he was not the officer actually serving the papers. Melton was denied bond back in September. Former Washington Wilkes High School athletic director turning himself into police today. Tony Christopher J. turned himself in after an eight-month investigation by the GBI. The 33-year-old is charged with sexual assault with a former student. It happened between August of 2018 and May of 2019. Jay is currently at the Wilkes County Jail. The Richmond County Sheriff's Office is looking for this missing 16-year-old. Officials say Honesty Mack was last seen Tuesday afternoon on Kensington Drive. That's a neighborhood off Deansbridge Road. She was wearing a pink zip-up sweatshirt, blue sweatpants, and tennis shoes. She has black hair with blonde braids, and if you have any information at all, you're asked to call the number on your screen. Over in Aiken County, investigators are looking for 24-year-old Anthony Bryant, Jr. 
He was reported missing by his family last Thursday. His family says he was last seen at the Days Inn on Columbia Highway back on December 31st. And if you have any information on where he may be, you can call the number on your screen. A federal judge temporarily stopped South Carolina's new abortion ban. The governor just signed it into law yesterday. Within hours, Planned Parenthood requested a temporary restraining order on the fetal heartbeat bill. They also filed a lawsuit against the state claiming the bill is unconstitutional. The restraining order will be in effect for 14 days. Take a look at this. This is in Atlanta. Crews there working to stabilize a construction crane dangling from a midtown high rise. It happened this morning, and officials say there was a mechanical failure while crews were taking down the crane. The operator made it out safely, but it still could possibly fall. Authorities shut down parts of nearby roads to be safe. They say buildings in the area also had to be evacuated. U.S. Senator Lindsey Graham talking in the... You may have watched the Mars rover landing, but down here on Earth, researchers are doing work for NASA right here in Augusta. The Medical College of Georgia just received a $750,000 grant from NASA. They're going to use it to study the bone loss astronauts face while they're in space. They say the research won't just apply to astronauts. It could help people who have spinal cord injuries as well. Researchers say they're honored and over the moon. Um, they're a phenomenal organization, and I think you know, if you look at what they've funded in the past, it's led to advancements that not only help the space program, but those here on Earth. And so I think that you know being part of that process is, is just really an honor for us. Coming up on News 12 at 6 o'clock, we'll hear more about how this can help people on Earth, at the International Space Station, and hopefully one day on Mars. Graduating high school seniors who did get the athletic scholarship they were looking for could get another shot. Augusta United held a ribbon-cutting ceremony this morning at their new indoor training facility in South Augusta. There's still work to be done before it's ready to welcome athletes, and head coach T.J. North wishes he had an opportunity like this when he was in high school. I tell all the kids, you know, if you got if you got an opportunity, you know, to join a prep school, believe in it, and, you know, good things will happen for you, you know. Like I said, you know, everything everything is here for you, you know, and um, we're, here to, we're here to take care of it. The program plans to expand beyond football next year and has an incoming class of more than 40 players. Handmade quilts are meant to last generations, but you wouldn't believe what this one went through. A family found it in their driveway in North Carolina after the tornado ripped through Brunswick County near Wilmington. They took to social media to hopefully return it to its rightful owner, and the family ultimately learned the owner lived 10 miles away and was killed in the deadly storm. The owner was part of a quilting club who completed 28 handmade quilts to be donated to a recovery house. They're now on the hunt for the 27 other quilts that were lost during the storm. The Golden Harvest Food Bank is staying busy holding several food banks throughout the week. This one just wrapped up at Faith Outreach Church in Hepzibah. If you didn't get a chance to go today, they are also holding one tomorrow morning at 10 at their facility in Augusta. AU Health is getting national recognition for its vaccine efforts. Tomorrow morning, AU will be featured on the Today Show talking about their vaccine push. They're also taking a deeper look at help they're getting from the Augusta National Golf Club. The Today Show starts again at 7 tomorrow morning, and you can watch it on NBC. We're taking you live to the Aiken County Fairgrounds, where the Aiken Fest is officially open, and the gates will be open this weekend starting at 1 o'clock. If you do want to go, tickets are $25 for unlimited rides. And if you do make it out there, just be aware there will be COVID precautions in place. But check that out up there. So I just want to pop on right now. It's a nice time to do it, Riley. Oh, predictions on the pandemic would cause a baby boom. That's up in the air right now. It just might be the other way around. Here, why next? Riley. We are expecting clear skies as we head into our weekend. We'll have a look at that weekend forecast and your seven day next. Local you have wall cracks. When you call my dad. Tonight in Texas, the beginning of a much needed thaw after bitter winter conditions across the state. But warmer temperatures are bringing with them big problems. Jay Gray has a closer look at the conditions and the new struggle for so many families in the Lone Star State. For the first time in a while, it's a warm sun rising over Texas. Across most of the state, temperatures climbing above freezing for the first time in a week. But even as the snow and ice starts to slowly melt away. We have a long way to go uh, in terms of getting out of this, and, and our problems are just sort of beginning, frankly. The biggest problem right now is water. Many communities under a boil order. Distribution centers providing for those without service. When I left, we had about this much water left that, to share between four people. 
But in some places, there's way too much water pouring out of thawed and cracked pipes. Plumbers burning the torch at both ends, working almost around the clock, with supplies beginning to run short and the need overwhelming. And there's not enough plumbers in the world to take care of the problems we're having right now. The relentless attack, first from the storm and now from what's left behind, wearing on so many here. It feels like it's just one thing after, after another, after another. And for some, they will be in crisis mode for weeks and months to come. It's still far from over. Today, President Biden signed an emergency declaration opening up federal funds and manpower to help with the recovery. He plans to visit the state maybe as early as next week. Our thoughts are with everyone in Texas right now. You're taking a live look over Grovetown and Riley. We've seen a lot of rain recently, and it's kind of nice not to see that uh, right now looking at Grovetown. I know it's Zane, and actually right there, you can see right at the horizon, there is a little bit of some clear sky poking on through. So those are those clear conditions out west, and that's going to be building in as we head into tonight. And the way that's set up should be a fantastic sunset for us. Here's a look at our temperatures across the southeast. They are still dealing with the bitter cold west of us across uh, the mid-south and the southern plains. For us, we're sitting in the mid-50s, so even though it's below average for us, won't take it considering where most of the rest of the region is. So there it is, clear skies the further west you go, so if you do have any plans, maybe head to Atlanta, uh, they are expecting or they are seeing sunny skies currently. 54 currently here in Augusta. We do have a low-level trough swinging on through that's uh, picking up our northwest winds a little bit, but no rain in the forecast as we progress into tonight. Now here's a look at how much rain we've seen, at least our top five rain totals across the CSRA Wednesday night through Friday morning. Newington, down uh, south of Sylvania in southern Screven County, they got close to four and a half inches of rainfall over about a 40-hour period, and that's where we did get verification of some roads being closed because uh, just completely covered with water. So Screven County Sheriff's Office did confirm that they did have some flooding issues out there. Now, for the weekend, this is the good news for us. The light at the end of the tunnel we've been looking forward to. Mid to upper 50s, both afternoon, Saturday, and Sunday, and we are expecting plenty of sun shine as well. That's going to be thanks to high pressure moving in, and that's going to keep our winds pretty light as well. Now, tonight's going to be chilly. We are expecting temps to drop down to the low 30s for most of us. Those will be your temperatures right around sunrise Saturday morning. So if any plans early tomorrow, definitely going to need to bundle up. Now, tomorrow afternoon, this should be our scene, folks, just blue skies, just like this. We're expecting a fantastic day, and those high temperatures close to where they are today, most likely mid to low 50s across most of the region. If you're heading up north towards the lake, those high temperatures look maybe a little bit cooler, low 50s, but the further south you go, we are expecting those highs at least 55, 56. Here's a current look at radar just showing that rain that moved through for us the past few days that is now off the coast and expected to continue moving out as high pressure moves in and keeps our weather pattern fairly quiet for the most part. Once again, nothing really popping up on radar, so you are uh, looking dry if you are planning to step out this evening. Now, this is pretty cool. We're starting to lose our last little bit of visible satellite imagery as we head towards uh, sunset. But take a look at this. This white stuff you see right here is not cloud cover. That's actually snow that's covering most of the southern plains and the lower Mississippi Valley and a portion of the country that definitely is not used to seeing that type of snowfall. Now, for us, we just have high pressure moving in. That's going to keep our skies pretty clear as we roll into our Saturday. Sunny skies expected through Saturday and Sunday. But as we roll into Sunday night and Monday, our next uh, front is going to be approaching us. Some showers will look possible Monday morning into Monday afternoon, but we are expecting that to clear out Monday night and bring back fantastic weather by Tuesday. Take a look at these temps next week. We're expecting a really nice forecast next week. Minus some rain Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, seeing those highs getting warmer, close to 70 Wednesday and next Thursday. Just a reminder, if you need shelter, the May Park Community Center is available. It's going to be open from 6 p.m. until 10 in the morning, but you must be inside by 9 tonight. It will remain open through the weekend until Tuesday morning. This is the first step taken by Augusta's new Homelessness Task Force. They say we plan to open more warming centers in the future. Keep Augusta beautiful in the Environmental Services Department. Need your tires and electronic items. You can bring those to the Augusta Landfill for free recycling tomorrow from 8 in the morning until noon. Recycling electronics saves space at the landfill and prevents pollution from toxic materials. Again, that's tomorrow from 8 to 12. Still ahead, social media can often be criticized, but this time, people are using it for good. We'll tell you how people are using Facebook and Twitter to help people in Texas. Jones Ford on Road. As Texas deals with the
the aftermath of a snowstorm, many people are suffering from no power, no food, no heat, and no water. But people across the country are pitching in to help using social media. Jamie Tucker shows us how to donate to agencies using social media and payment apps. We all complain about social media, but not this time. People are using Facebook and Twitter to raise money for the people affected by the big snowstorms in Texas. And they're using apps on their phone to make those donations so the organizations can use that money immediately. Supermodel Chrissy Teigen helped get the social media ball rolling with a single tweet to her 13.7 million followers. Please list some good ways to help Texas here for me and for all of us. It's gotten thousands of replies and suggestions that people can do to help. The hashtag, love thy neighbor, trending on Twitter, passing along organizations accepting donations through Venmo, Cash App, and PayPal. Dawa Heels is a nonprofit in Austin providing assistance to people of color, specifically artists, musicians, and teachers. Survive to Thrive Foundation is putting some of Austin's large homeless population up in hotels. Austin Mutual Aid started a GoFundMe project to help house the homeless in area hotels. It started with a $75,000 goal that's raised well over $400,000 so far. There are many other opportunities you can find by searching for the hashtag LoveThyNeighborTX on Facebook and Twitter. If you want to help but you never use these apps, it's called Cash App and Venmo. You'll need to link your bank account or credit card account to the app. And if you missed any of this, I'll have it on my blog, WhatTheTech.tv. That is What The Tech. I'm Jamie Tucker. So many ways out there right now to help and give back. It's nice to see everyone coming together. Well, the response has been so great. The Houston Mutual Aid Organization posted that it's no longer accepting donations through Venmo and asked that other donations be made to their GoFundMe page. Heading into the weekend, we finally bring back that sunshine. Have a look at how much rain can fall on Monday. Next. Ashley Homestore's biggest President's Day sale. Follow News 1226 on Instagram to see what's trending in your area. Here's a look at your community calendar. You can ditch your date and adopt a dog that's rescheduled for tomorrow. It was actually canceled last weekend because of the weather. It's from 9 in the morning to 5 p.m. at the Aiken County Animal Shelter, and it's going to be a nice day to get out there. And what better way than to get a new friend? We're going to take you live out again to the Aiken County Fairgrounds where the Aiken Fest is officially open. And you know what? If you're not there right now, it's okay because this weekend it's going to start at 1 o'clock. Tickets are $25 for unlimited rides. But Riley, check this out. This just looks like a great time. I mean, a lot of memories, even when I think back to fairs sure. I've gone to in the past, they happen. they happen at places like this. And I can just already smell the funnel cakes. I oh. mean, obviously that's the best part about going to the fair is the food. you got to get your fried Oreo, looks like, right there. You get your funnel cakes, but the swings, uh, the swings are pretty intense. Honestly, I went to the fair a couple months ago, or not a couple months ago, I guess before the pandemic. Went on the swings, and it was way more intense than I anticipated, so have some fun out there. should be beautiful weather for the weekend. And as far as the rain goes, no rain storms from Saturday or Sunday, but as we roll into Monday, our next system is expected to move on through. Not expecting anything too threatening, maybe a few showers, but those rain totals look to be around a quarter of an inch for most of us, so not expecting flooding or severe weather with that rain threat on Monday. If you are lucky enough to maybe get to go fishing tomorrow at the lake, that water temp sitting right at 49 degrees. Sunrise is going to be just after 7 a.m., and if you're heading out right around sunrise, those temps are going to be near freezing. So maybe bundle up early, but later to the afternoon, abundant sunshine and highs in the 50s for your Saturday. Heading into Monday, that's when our next chance for rain is going to be, but past that, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, seeing those warmer-than-average temps finally. Thanks, Riley. Well, stick with us. We'll have more news straight ahead.